So this morning I did have the option of grabbing tomatoes from the Salvation Army Furniture Depot. But I noticed that there weren't very many, like maybe three or four packages available. And I already have, these are my tomatoes from my peat bale row. These are the last of them. So this is all the tomatoes that I have left. But um, some of them held up pretty well. Others are, you can see are pretty shrivelly. But these ones that look like Vaseline, they're perfect. And these ones right here, the red ones with the pointy bums, um, they're great too. They really lasted. Um, these ones worked out pretty well too. The ones that are partially brown and green. Anyway, but the others I'll have to make soup with or something like that. But um, so anyway, I didn't didn't take the tomatoes that were offered because I thought, well, other people can have them because I still have these to go through. So I will make some sort of a tomatoey soup, tomatoey based soup um, with these. And some of these, this one, I think I'm going to throw out because this one's not looking so good. There are a few here that aren't the greatest, but still pretty good for March the 7th, 2019. And um, anyway, I just finished my soup. Oh, I missed a little bit of kimchi on my, my spoon. So I try to put the, I try to let the soup cool to mm, lukewarmish and then put the kimchi on or else I'm going to kill my probiotic bacteria, which sometimes I'm anxious and I eat it that way anyway, because I'm still going to get the health benefits of the cabbage and the ginger and, you know, the stuff that's in it. So just not the probiotic bacteria, because if I kill that, then I don't get any health benefits from it. But I do like to try to get as much probiotic bacteria in my diet as possible. So, uh, and putting it on a lukewarm soup is really easy for me anyway. But, oh, what did I have on me? I don't know. Paris, I brought you something. So, um, one of these yogurts I will give to Paris because her her favorite food is uh, this yogurt, I think. She loves it. And Elvis might try to take it from her, and she'll let him because she loves him. But every time I have yogurt given to me, I give it to her because I know that it's her favorite thing. So, And Annafred can't have any because she's lactose intolerant. But Paris handles it just fine, so she can have it, because she really likes this stuff. I should show you the ingredients on here. It's funny. Can you lick that? Because it says, like, on the container, it says all-natural farm yogurt. And if you look on, this, on the ingredients, though, it's not the healthiest ingredient list, right? I don't know if you can see it. My lighting in here is really, really bad. But anyway, my first ingredient is fruit base, which is the number one ingredient in that is sugar. So anyway, and then there's some um, other things in there. But can you, I'm, I'm not going to feed you up here. This That would be very messy. That's Paris's. So she'll eat what she wants, and then maybe maybe she'll get a fair amount before Elvis takes it from her. Because <laughs> she lets him do whatever. Because she loves the little sucker. So, um, I'm going to... He's, he, he's trying to scare everyone away. That's Elvis. So, um, don't do that. I'm going to read to you my notes from Unsavory Truth, How Food Companies Skew the Science of What We Eat by Marion Nestle. Um, and there it is. Uh, so the author is Paulette Goddard, Professor of Nutrition, Food Studies and Public Health at New York University and Visiting Prof of Nutritional Sciences at Cornell. PhD in molecular biology and an MPH in public health nutrition from UC Berkeley. Uh, she's a prize winning author of Food Politics, What to Eat, and Soda Politics. So, and I haven't read those yet, but I may as well get them out and 
and see see what that's about too and I've anyway I'll just read some of my notes page one this is um, a quote food choices relate relate to so many of the most challenging problems in social health uh, and social health is only the most obvious no society health I'm sorry I'm so tired five hour 26 minutes sleep this, this might be terrible for you to have to listen to society health is only the most obvious what we eat is linked to matters of poverty inequality race and class immigration social and political conflict environmental degradation climate change and much else page two 2016 u.s presidential race russian government hackers stole electronic messages of democratic party officials and posted them on wikileaks the dc leaks included messages between an advisor to the clinton campaign Capricia Marshall and Michael Goldsman, a vice president of the Coca-Cola company. While working with Clinton, Marshall was also consulting for Coca-Cola and billing the company 7000 per month for her services. The author's name was mentioned in notes taken on one of her lectures. Someone working for Coca-Cola was advising Coca-Cola to monitor her, so that's Nestle, uh, future presentations, research and presence on social media, and to also keep tabs on Professor Barrow's work. Coca-Cola has cozy relationships with reporters and the university scientists conducting research funded by the company. Coca-Cola funded university researchers that created a group called the Global Energy Balance Network. Their purpose was to convince the public that physical activity, activity is superior to dieting as a means of controlling body weight. In March 2015, she began to post summaries, that's Nestle, um, of such studies on the blog she has written since 2007 at her website, foodpolitics.com, and continued these postings until March 2016. Six, the Hershey Company and the Almond Board of California funded a study, Dark Chocolate and Almonds May Decrease Risk of Coronary Heart Disease. Nine, she developed her own policy for dealing with payments and gifts from companies to try to minimize their influence on her and to remind herself to be vigilant about avoiding unconscious influence. She accepts reimbursements for travel, lodging, meal expenses, but doesn't personally accept honoraria, consulting fees, or any other direct payments. Instead, she asks food companies to make an equivalent donation to the Marion Nestle Food Studies Collection at the NYU Library or now that she's retired, to her department's student travel fund. Payments for travel, hotel meals, meeting registrations, and small gifts are all it takes to influence the research results and prescription practices of physicians. So, I noted that because this was all on the same page, and she just said that... Um, she accepts reimbursement for travel, lodging, and meal expenses. But da 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 da. You can rewind that if you want to listen to more. Um, page 14. Industry uses these strategies. One, cast doubt on the science. Two, fund research for desired result. Three, offer gifts, consulting arrangements. Four, use front groups. Five, promote self regulation. Six, promote personal responsibility as the fundamental issue. Seven, use the courts to challenge critics and unfavorable regulations. Eighteen, for every $1,000 received from drugs, drug companies, the prescribing rate for brand name statins increases by 0.1%. Payments for educational training led to a 4.8% increase. So I guess they've done studies on seeing how, seeing if physicians were really influenced by, because they get a lot of, um, assistance from in various ways from the pharmaceutical industry right so anyway 19 investigators concerned about health crisis caused by overuse of opioids found that from 2013 to 2015 um, what is that I have to look at that um, where was I? Investigators in opiate 
caused by overuse of opiates found that from 2013 to 2015, oh, I don't know what that word is. In one in 12, that's not a word, it was a number, or a few numbers, it confused me. Uh, one in 12 American doctors receive payments, more than 46 million from drug companies selling these drugs. Brand reminder, pens and prescription pads increase prescri prescription rates, as do samples. Visits from detailers are particularly effective, which is why many teaching hospitals now ban them. Meals are now the most frequent kind of drug industry gift with a median value of $138 each. So they must have found that worked out pretty well for them. Um, remember, she accepts meals. So anyway, 84% um, of physicians reported receiving gifts in 2009. Cardiologists were especially welcoming targets. 90% of physicians deny its effects, but research shows otherwise. 31. In the U.S., the Morrill Act, M-O-R-R-I-L-L, -L, Act of 1862 set the stage for future collaborations between university scientists and food companies. This act gave land to states to establish colleges of agriculture for promoting the liberal and practical education of the industrial classes in the several pursuits and professions in life. The new land grant colleges created departments of animal, poultry, and dairy sciences and received faculty to conduct research explicitly aimed at helping expand animal agriculture in their states. Cornell is the designated land-grant university in New York State. It established animal science departments in 1902. The current department still manages a dairy herd and produces Cornell ice cream, yogurt, and cheese. 32. This is a quote from her. The way I look at it, food science is the food industry. Um, and she says, Cornell food science students take classes in the Pepsi Co. Auditorium. 34. $35,000 grants towards research on any relevant health issue in which grape consumption may have a beneficial impact. Letters from California Table Grape Commission. Or $30,000 grants comes from yogurt and nutrition for research on the health benefits associated with yogurt consumption. She says this kind of research is easy to spot. She says, whenever I see a study suggesting that a single food, such as pork, oats, or pears, eating pattern, ha having breakfast, or a product, beef, diet sodas, or chocolate, improves health, I look to see who paid for it. This is possible because most professional journals now require sci scientific articles to include special sections where authors must disclose who paid for their study and whatever financial arrangements they might have with the funder or a similar company. 43. Even though not all industry funded research favors the funder, we can understand why the funding is associated with research outcome. Food companies want to sell products, researchers want to get grants. 45. American Heart Association advises six teaspoons as the upper limit, daily limit for women and children. That's sugar. Uh, men are bigger, they get to have nine. WHO and U.S. Dietary Guidelines both advise limiting sugar to 10% of daily calories, which works out to approximately 12 teaspoons per day on average. All these recommendations refer to added sugars. Nobody is or should be concerned about the sugars naturally present in whole fruits and vegetables. Journalist Gary Taubes says that no sugar is safe since it's responsible for obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, stroke, gout, and Alzheimer's disease. 46. She says, soon after my book, Food Politics, came out in 2002, I did a radio interview in which I mentioned that soft drinks contain sugar and water, but are otherwise nutritionally useless. I soon received a certified letter from a lawyer for the Sugar Association, from the Sh Sugar Association, accusing me of making numerous false, misleading, disparaging, and defamatory statements about sugar. 49. Corn Refiners Association paid Rick Berman, head of the Center for Consumer Freedom, $3.5 million. 
dollars for his services and had authorized spending up to a hundred thousand dollars to hire him to find out whether the sugar industry was behind anti high fructose corn syrup science as indeed it was c r a paid james ripay maybe ten million dollars over a four-year period for his studies these unsurprisingly showed no special health effects of consuming high fructose corn syrup the CRA also paid him a $4,100 a month retainer to write editorials disputing claims that high fructose corn syrup might be riskier than sugar. 50. The sugars in honey are mostly glucose, 22 to 35%, and fructose, 28 to 41%. 51. Candy generated $35 billion. $35 billion in retail sales in 2017, two-thirds of that from chocolate. 55. Chocolate companies funded research suggesting health benefits. Um, and there was one thing, it was from SOAR Center for Science in the Public Interest of Journal of Agriculture, Food Chemistry, um, 51, 9169, comma, and consumerlab.com I don't know anyway um, and I'm quoting here how much chocolate you need to eat to get a heart healthy dose of flavanols four and three quarters ounces of dark chocolate which equals 750 calories 26 ounces of chocolate syrup which equals 3170 calories 40 ounces of milk chocolate which equals equals 5,850 calories. So, now my husband loves milk chocolate. He loves it. And he's, a lot of people, they just, they, they hear the chocolate word, they hear, oh, chocolate's healthy. And they're, they're not really thinking it through. They're just, they want it to be healthy, right? So they'll, they, like my husband, he likes milk chocolate and he thinks, oh, well, chocolate's healthy. I can eat the milk chocolate, which contains a lot of fat and a lot of sugar, right? So, and if you just ate dark chocolate with no sugar, how much of it would you really want to eat? So w would you get a heart healthy dose of that if you didn't have any sugar in it or anyway, something to think about. Flavanols are destroyed by traditional chocolate processing. Page 64. Who classifies red meat as probably carcinogenic to humans and processed meat as unambiguously carcinogenic to humans? 95. Coca-Cola CEO Mutar Kent provided more transparency by posting lists of its community and research partnerships for the past five years and updated regularly. On September 22, 2015, the company revealed the names of the hundreds of individual health professionals, scientific experts, and organizations it had funded in the U.S. since 2010, along with the amounts it had paid them. This funding totaled $21.8 million for research and $96.8 million for community partnerships over the five-year period from 2010 to 2015. 96. The site revealed that from 2010 to 2015, Coca-Cola had contributed $700,000 to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, $2.9 million to the American Academy of Pediatrics, and $3.5 million to the American Academy of Family Physicians. 145. Dietitians were found to comprise the majority of experts paid by Coca-Cola. Now, if you think about this, the first thing I was wondering about was why all of a sudden on in 2015 did Coca-Cola decide to uh, become more transparent in this area? And then I was thinking about, well, when was this like, because remember there were Coca-Cola um, emails that were leaked in the 2016 U.S. press race, right? And so I don't know, if I'm a, a big company, say, which I'm not, I'm nobody, nobody knows me or, and when I die, nobody will notice. But say I'm Coca-Cola, 
Now, Coca-Cola has been around and successful for a long time, and they would like to stay around and successful for a long time to come. So in order to have, like if I were them, I would be very aware of which way the wind's blowing. And so in 2015, I might be seeing what's, you know, what might be happening with, with the next political uh, election or whatever. And I might make plans for this. And this makes me wonder actually about the, like they're saying, and this is what I've thought all along too, was Russian government hackers do, 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 right? Now I'm wondering, Coca-Cola? Anyway, that's me, right? So, um, but yeah. So you have to, if you're a large company, you want to stay in business for a long time, you have to have some sort of planning for the future. You have to be able to see, you have to uh, imagine what's going to happen in the future and respond accordingly. So, um, and maybe they did that is what I'm thinking. And they only revealed it from 2010 to 2015, and then they were going to update it. So who was in power in 2010 to 2015? something to think about right like why weren't they releasing this information from way back or what you know for a, why only 2010 to 2015 i'm wondering about so anyway this should get you thinking it certainly gets me thinking about this um page 147 craft singles are cheese slices in quotation marks because they are not cheese they are a pasteurized prepared cheese product with a list of ingredients so long that one reporter said it read like a novel. 168. As anyone who knows me can tell you, this is a quote, I love food, am an omnivore, and practice what I preach, a large, largely but not exclusively plant-based diet that occasionally includes junk foods and often includes sweets in moderation, of course. Um, and that's not me. I, you know, lately I have not been eating very well, but I finished off my soup and it was quite good. And I'm going to try to do better. So this is one of the oranges that I got out of that case. And so far, I only noticed one orange that I had to compost straight away because it wasn't too well. But um, last week we got um, from the furniture depot. What, uh, blueberries and these golden berries. No, these ones are not, they, they weren't good. Like there were some in the package that were not good. So I had them in the fridge and I'm going to save the seeds later from this so that I have some more golden berry seeds. <sighs> so anyway, um, I, I try not to eat. So somebody was asking me or I, I guess they just, a lot of people just assume that I'm vegan. I'm not. I, I never have thought of myself as that. But when I'm eating healthy, I'm eating vegan. But I don't, I don't think of myself that way. Uh, because most of my life, I was ovo-lacto with a heavy emphasis on the lacto. I mean, I love cheese. I have to admit it. I have to watch it. I So... I can't actually let myself near cheese because I will eat it. And there is no stopping point for me. I will just eat it all. So I can't be around cheese. It's no good for me. But um, I mean, other people can handle it. They can have just a little bit and they're satisfied and that's fine. You know, and I don't necessarily think there's, there's a problem with that. But anyway, he thought I was vegan. I am not. But if I were, when I'm at my healthiest, I am. I guess technically but um, yeah I, I don't really think in terms of that I think you know a person should just try to be as whole foods plant-based as they can and if they're getting a little bit like James eats the fishy stuff like sardines and whatever um, salmon that's fine but he also eats just as much vegetables as I do and stuff like that. So when I eat a lot. So anyway, I don't know where I was. 
177. American Society for Nutrition has strict disclosure guidelines, but its journals publish many studies sponsored by food companies. The disclosure of a potential conflict of interest does not necessarily exclude an article from consideration for publication. The goal of disclosure is transparency. Page 183. Congress passed F Freedom of Information Act to promote transparency as a means of countering government corruption. Its success in achieving that goal is hotly debated. Critics complain about the frustrations of the FOIA process. Government agencies take years to release documents and redact them ex excessively. 197. Since 1980, U.S. dietary guidelines have consistently called for eating less sugar, although mainly to reduce empty nutrient-free calories or to prevent tooth decay. Only in 2015 did the guidelines finally advise eating less sugar as a part of an eating pattern to reduce risk of chronic disease, the same year that WHO deemed sugar a major risk factor for obesity, type 2 diabetes, and other chronic conditions. 2013, NOVA classification scheme groups. 1. Natural and unprocessed or minimally processed foods. 2. Processed culinary ingredients such as oils, butter, sugar, and salt. 3. Foods processed in basic ways as in making bread or cheese, canning, freezing, and other such methods. And 4. Ultra-processed foods such as soft drinks or packaged snacks. The NOVA scheme automatically disqualifies makers of ultra-processed foods as sponsors on the grounds that these foods are deliberately formulated to be habit forming, are heavily advertised, are falsely promoted as healthful, and cause troublesome effects on global nutrition and health. Now, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before. Um, when my dad would diet, and I mean people think diet, oh that's bad. Well, any, any, um, like the the food that you eat on a regular basis, that's your, your diet. Um, go, going on a temporary, changing your, your diet temporarily to whatever diet plan, if it's temporary, the effects will only be temporary. If you make permanent changes, hmm, how's that going to work out for you? So anyway, my father, though, he would make temporary changes, which people usually associate that as the only meaning of diet, whatever. Um, and when he would diet... He, the only thing, he'd only cut out one thing from his um, usual eating pattern, and that was soft drinks. He would cut that out, and his favorite were orange pop and grape pop. But um, he would cut out those things, and he would lose a ton of weight. And, well, he never let himself get to be really overweight or anything, because he always kept in control, and that's how he did. He'd just cut out the pop for a while. But think about it, if he'd cut out the pop all the time, he would have been better off all the time, right? So, it's something to think about anyway. Well, I was going to say something else and then I didn't while I was, that's why I try to say it right when I'm thinking of it, because I, I won't remember now. Anyway, I enjoyed reading that book. And I do have page 88, some things listed here that I will. Um, it's examples from industry-funded studies of food, plants, and results. Useful 